This is 6 p.m. regular session for our special meeting today. Um, we have, um, Madam Clerk, can you call the roll, please? Council Member Blair? Present. Council Member Brown? Here. Council Member Chedester? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Neal? Here. Mayor Madrigal? Here. Okay, so we have one item, new business. This is discussion, direction, or action regarding the Moore Volunteer Fire Department pay. Mr. Olson. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. So as you know, we've been working uh, for the past probably nine months with, with fire, um, going through a couple opportunities and trying to get some trying to get some things to closure. So one of the last big ones was how we we're gonna pay them. So tonight we're here to close that final loop. Um, so I'll just kind of give the history, but resolution 2018-05 was adopted by the Lemoore City Council to pay firefighter department volunteers $5 per call meeting and training attended in accordance with FS, FLSA federal, state, and local laws. So the city could comply with the law and pay the individuals Basically, the individuals were asked to submit W-9s, which then in turn we could get them paid, get them current, and uh, we would 1099 them at the end of the year. Unfortunately, what that did do, it would take them out of a volunteer status and make them an independent contractor, and our, J our agreement with our Risk Management Association would not, would not have covered them had they had a workers' comp injury. That was brought forth by Brahm and the group, so the fire department actually caught that one. So, great catch. Um, nobody got hurt, well, nobody felt the W-9, so nobody got hurt. The, the alternative to that is we could have paid them via W-4s, we would have taxed them, they can get paid and we get their pay current. So, that, that's, that was that one. So, another, <clears throat> so, but the Lamar Volunteer Firefighter Association, however, contends that the city can legally pay the association, their nonprofit, instead of individual volunteers. And at present, the association members were unwilling to sign and present W-4s to the city. So, I met with, with Bruce and Brown yesterday after finalizing some meetings and talking to county, and we've, we've come up with three alternatives that we feel can, can get this issued past us. First one being, do not pay volunteers on a per call meeting and trainings attended basis. Rather, establish expenditures within the fire department budget that would cover all the costs of performing the functions of public safety services and outreach. Such line items would be subject to the City of Lamar purchasing policy and would be accounted for during the budget process. This method is the most transparent and allows the most consistent budget control. Alternative number two, pay the volunteers $5 a call as outlined in resolution 2018-05. This method requires tracking calls and can leave the budget, fluctuate, budget fluctuations unknown unless specific protocols are put in place or a cap is established on the amount paid per year or paid per volunteer. This option also requires the volunteers to fill out the appropriate tax forms so the city can comply with app, app, applicable tax laws. Okay, item number three. It's kind of a hybrid approach here. Contract with the nonprofit association, the Lamar Volunteer Firefighters Association, to perform ancillary services separate from the service, separate from to the services, fire services provided by the volunteers. So what we're saying here is we will contract with their association to do ancillary services, which would include um, they would help recruit and advertise for potential um, volunteer firefighters down the road and introduce them to the city for vetting. They would also spell out requirements for community events involvement and would require financial accountability from the association back to the city. It would be similar to a contract that we do for like um, the chamber. We give the chamber a contract and in that contract they provide so many events, so many of this, so many of that. Um, we feel that this way we will be able to make a, a to contract with the association and the contract does not uh, it still fulfills the requirement of some of our other agencies that work with us that we still have you know staff uh, staff and training 
it still falls under the city control. So with that, um, also with that hybrid, hybrid approach besides paying the, the association for some ancillary duties, the city would establish an amount, line item budgets that would cover basically everything you need, wells you're on call or, or on a service call, so we'll make sure there's dollars for waters, Gatorade, sodas, snacks, things of that issue. Those would be separate line items. So, um, we'll open it up for, for comments here quickly, but the staff is recommending alternative one, which do not pay volunteers on a per call, meeting and training, attended basis rather, establish expenditures within the fire department that would cover all the costs of performing the function of public fire services and outreach. And the reason one was chosen was it is the most transparent and that's why we picked it. So with that, question? Questions. Number Any three, uh, on, on number three, or on the, when well, we're talking about the contract, uh, the, the uh, services, because I know that they, they already do like Red Ribbon Week, they do uh, National Night Out, things of that nature. That would be part. Would that could that could that be part of that? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I know they already do things like you know fire safety, things of that nature. You know, working with schools, things you know, you know, um, other things in the community, smoke alarms, things like that. I get down that pays one of the very last things that we had to, to do to accomplish everything that was on the list. But I'd like to point out that to date, since we started talking, all the new training manuals have been purchased. The new training modules and software has been purchased. Um, a training matrix and requirements for the roles and responsibilities have been provided to the Moore Volunteer Fire Department. Eight, la eight laptops and printers were purchased. An administrative position was was uh, targeted, interviewed, and starts May 7th. That'll be 100% dedicated to the fire department. They've also have attended report writing training that was given in house, as well as Sims and Mims training. Those were some uh, areas that we needed to work on. So that's, that stuff that has been completed. Now we're just getting ready to get into the curriculum, and then. Um, there was some concerns about aged out equipment, hats and things like that. All equipment was funded and ordered, still is not received to my knowledge. You're still waiting on some helmets, but everything's out. And then also a new truck has been, has been ordered and a new, what do you call it? Your brush truck, rescue truck? A new rescue truck to replace one of the aging truck in the fleet. So there's been a lot going on, a lot of collaboration, a lot of talk. But uh, I think we're nearing an end here. So up to this point, how have we been compensating the fire department for their services? So once we got to the resolution that was passed, that said we had to pay in accordance with FLSA, they have not received, they have not received any pay for December forward. Um, we were going to ask them, as I mentioned earlier, to sign W-9s. That wouldn't work because of the, um, the what the, yeah the RMA contract and how it would affect their workers comp so I bet they could do W-2s if they were to give us W-4s tomorrow we could cut them checks and get them current I don't know if that's something they want to do or depending on what option we go with tonight if we enter into a contract on alternative number three once that was in place then we could go back and pay them the five dollars a call into the association to clear up their back pay. That'll take longer than if they want money now and sign W-4s. So up to that point though, I mean traditionally, how have we been compensating them before these discussions? Five, $5 per call, per training, per meeting attended, and it was just, it was a check being written out to a bank account, right? Or, pardon me? So everybody was basically, 
to use it. So each mushed together. Each individual had all their totals. They ran it up as one number and cut one check to the department. So each individual firefighter was not being compensated? No. Have, have we asked other fire departments, volunteers, how they compensate their firefighters? Yes. And how do they, that, to your knowledge? So they either don't, and then like Reedley's who's closest to us, they, they pay them off W-4s. They pay them through their payroll system and they tax their, they tax their labor. So why is the way that we have been paying them not suitable now? I'll let Heather help me out on this one, but first, uh, when they lost their nonprofit status, I know that had an effect on it. And in order to pay with any public funds, there has to be a mechanism to track it, whether it be a W-9, W-4, a contract, an agreement of sorts that's in place. So for oh, the past while, there hasn't been an agreement in place. We've just been paying based off historical. Ms. Corder, can you help with that answer? Yes. There's been a lot of items in uh, finance that's been, that need to be cleaned up, and this is one of the items. There are other items that we go through, and when, when I notice them and when they come to my attention, they have to be cleaned up. I need either, I need a contract to pay a vendor. I need something that, set, that tells me how I can pay these people pay people or a vendor. I can't just cut checks the way it was done before without any backup or any any sort of agreement between the two, between the vendor and the council. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Because it's public funds and it has to be tracked. So if I didn't need that, then I could just mm -hmm. decide tomorrow that I wanted to pay, uh, uh, you know, okay. anybody, anything. I have to have backup. Okay. The auditors come in and they, they track that. And if they found it, they would. I would get a finding. The city okay. of Lamore would get a finding. So it could be okay. Thank you. So if I may, yes. Um, how has it been presented before, years before? Prior to me coming, it's it's always been we paid them. It, they submit uh, an Excel spreadsheet. It has a total on it. And correct me because I've only been here a couple of years, but they would submit it, and we would cut a check to the Lamore Volunteer Fire Department. And we did it every month, and that's how it went. And now is When I came, I noticed that we didn't have anything on file. I was going okay. through all of our there contracts, okay. and I noticed that we didn't have anything on file. This isn't the only thing that I've noticed. And so we've gone through and we've corrected multiple things, and this is just one of the things that, happened, that I came across. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So firefighters, you guys want to comment on or I'm going to open it, go ahead and open this to the public comment, but I would like to say that if the firefighters, I would like to give them more time than three minutes. We normally only give three minutes. Can I do that? Okay. We can do that. Is that suitable to council? I'm fine. Per, per your discretion, right. I would say. So would somebody like to speak on behalf of you guys as far as what you're thinking and what, where we're at on this? Good evening, everybody. Uh, Brom Roster with the fire department. Um, you know, I had three pages of stuff written out that Nathan, you know, kind of went over some of that. So let's kind of skip the nitty gritty here. This thing is overpay. Um, one thing that we're not talking about, and what <coughs> Heather might be able to clear up, well, when you give money to a nonprofit, it's a donation. It's not pay. That could be. That could be different because when you make a donation, you don't need a receipt, you don't need contract, you just need, you know, if it's big enough, you get a letter from the nonprofit saying, thank you for the donation of this amount, here's our tax identification number. Okay. And then again, uh, just going around in the public, you know, stuff's been floating around, around town, around on the internet that we get paid individually. You know, Ms. Mary, you were talking about that. Uh, throughout history, no volunteer has been paid individually. Okay. We've always taken those funds, they've gone into our general fund, and we've used them to fund the different activities in the fire department. So we get about every single school, elementary school, coming through where we teach fire education. We hand out hats, we hand out stickers, we hand out pencils, we do all that stuff. We take the trucks and we go to their facilities. We get requests from Kiwanis, from Lions Clubs, from the different children's groups. Uh, we just did MIQ Multicultural Day where we hung up piñata, piñatas from the truck. 
Um, so when you're thinking about these different options, when it comes down to it, just know that we're the ones sitting here saying we don't want the money individually. Okay? We don't want it. We want it to go back into the department. We want it to go to our nonprofit. We want to spend it on the community. Part of our nonprofit application, we, we got it going again as of the, basically the first of the year. You know, give or take a couple weeks. It was right after January. So nonprofit is up and going. It's active. It can be contributed to right now. We can take money from cities, from individuals. There's no reason we cannot fund that nonprofit. We also have to abide by the rules of the nonprofit. Nonprofits are abused all across the country. So there are strict IRS guidelines and there are strict reporting things that we have to do. We just can't go spend the money on anything that we want. We have to use it for the good of the community. If we don't use it for the good of the community, then we get fined. Okay, the nonprofit gets fined. It could get shut down. So it's not just we get to spend our money on anything that we want, okay? And that is on the application that you have to submit to the IRS and to the California government, okay? So we have our bylaws that are outlined by the Lamore Fire Department, bylaws that the city council has approved and we are going through and amending. So there's, as transparency, it's pretty transparent as you can get when it comes to it, okay? So we're not trying to hide anything from the city of Lemoore, from city council of how we're spending our money. We just want our money. We want to continue to give it back to the community. And right now there's just a big roadblock in it because of some you know, legal things when it comes to it. You know, I provided information showing that it's, it is legal to provide or to make a donation to a nonprofit from public funds. We provide a service to this city that the city does not provide. That's one of the key testing points when it says if a city can actually give money to a nonprofit. There's three of them. You guys can look at the other ones on, you know, on your own. That was provided. Um, but there's, there's no reason. There's nothing holding this back from that. It allows us to have service awards. It allows us to have appreciation events. It allows us to donate to other organizations in the uh, city of Lemoore. We barbecue for other organizations all the time. We donate that food to them. Uh, we just did an FFA one, appreciation for the kids at the high school. We get asked and we normally do it. We normally make a donation of the meat and our time, obviously. Okay, so it's, it's like I said, we're not trying to be, uh, you know, we're not trying to pull over the wool over anybody's eyes. You know, the money that we're given is basically ends up back in the city one way or another. Um, you know, the W-9, the employee status, you know, we've, 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 all, we've given you guys some good information to make a, a good decision. This has been since like October or November, and um, you know, you guys can legally pay us. But the one thing that you guys have to know, it's taken a toll on us. We've spent a lot of extra time away from our families. We've kept training, we've kept going on calls, we've been helping the sick, we've been helping the injured. Um, and I'm saying this personally, I expect an apology. The time that you took away from me and my family is not good. And it needs to stop. We need a solution here, now, and get this done. Excuse me, if I may. Question, so how much can you get up to on donations and all that you get on, can you expound on what you guys can purchase with the donations? Sure. Um, as far as I know, there's no limit on what we can make on donations. Excuse me? What we can receive in donation, I understand there's, there's no limit. Okay. We're a nonprofit just like uh, <coughs> UNICEF. I mean, we are, there's really no limits. And the limits on spending-wise, we have to have, we have to spend for the benefit of the community. Okay? We can, like I was saying, we can give like service awards. We can do appreciation events for um, all of our volunteers. We can do that stuff, okay? But otherwise, we're spending money for the good of the community. Yes. Okay. Okay. I was just wondering, what can you, like, other things you could purchase besides that for the community? Can you guys purchase things for you yourself, like, for the fire department the volunteers? Can if, you, yes, we could. As of now, we, you know, we're purchasing some of the little things that we need, okay. you know, some of the little first aid things, or if our pulse saw breaks, you know, we have some of that little, um, that money set aside to where 
you know, where we need we need more hats. You know, we don't we don't do a PO to the city for for new hats. You know, we go buy a thousand hats and you know it's eight or nine hundred dollars or whatever it is. I'm making up numbers, but yeah, no, we we do have um, some restrictions on how we can spend the money, and it's really the same restrictions that you guys have in place on us now. Okay, thank you, sir. I have Good a job. question. Well, what, um, just noting earlier, you said that you received nonprofit, or you re-upped your nonprofit status and had it all squared away in January. Is that correct? Yeah, it's January. I think we got the letter back at the beginning of February. Um, Nathan has a copy of our bylaws and the actual EIN number that was issued and stamped by the uh, IRS. When did the city get that? When did the city obtain that letter? Uh, I sent it to him today. It's been known for a while. Well, I mean. So March 5th. So city attorney, now we have, there's been no intentional, um, intentional desire not to pay, okay? We know, I know that you guys do provide a valuable service. Mm -hmm. And I've been involved, you, I was over at your station a couple of days, or a couple of times with, mm -hmm. Uh, Council Member Brown and uh, Mr. Olson. So I think we've worked out. There's a lot of issues that were worked out. And I think this is the last one that we've been talking about. Correct. So I appreciate everything you guys have done because I know it's been hard, big changes for your organization. A lot of history, a lot of tradition, all those kinds of things. And we had to make some changes um, as as uh, unpleasant they, as they were. So we appreciate all that, that you guys have been accommodating those, our requests. Um, so I just wanted to make it clear to everybody here that there's been no intention not to pay you guys. And I always knew that we needed to pay you and had to pay you. And Nathan's been work, trying to work this out. I think we've got something today that we might be able to live with both of us. The one point that was sticking, the sticking point I was going to ask our city attorney was the question about how cities, municipalities spend their funds as far as for services that we are required to provide. So could you give us an update or an analysis or answer to that? Um, are you asking? What, what the biggest sticking point was in this whole discussion, I guess, was. With regards to, well. I think that the, are you talking with regards to donating? Yes. Yes. So I think there was a statement that a nonprofit, that the cities can pay nonprofit organizations, uh, donate to nonprofit organizations. That's a correct statement. Cities can donate to nonprofit organizations. There are three categories in which public funds can be spent for nonprofit organizations. Those three categories are um, to, if the organization provides a supplemental service, for lack of a better word, to the uh, organization for services they're adding to a services already being provided by the city. Um, if they provide a secondary benefit to cities, to the city um, in some manner, or if they are providing a service that the city chooses not to provide. And um, I have provided a confidential memo to council and with regards to analyze, analyzing those three options and without waiving the attorney-client privilege, that's about all I can say. Okay. So you can expand upon those three options if we waive the attorney-client privilege then? So that, that could be- Council would have to vote to waive the attorney-client privilege. Or we could have, uh, or Nathan, do you feel comfortable weighing out the, the three options? If Are we discussing all three options or are we just gonna vote on- Oh, so, so I, I believe that option three that Nathan mentioned was a way to try and bridge the gap of this issue without getting into legal terminology. So why don't we go with all three options and see what the comments are on this. May I? Yes, sir. It's, it's still public comment, so. Yeah. Oh, yes. Basically, what I expressed, Chairman, I'm the fire chief for the city of Lamore, for the Lamore Volunteer Fire Department. We have those three whatever, the, words, whatever the word is. I don't talk like him, I'll just tell you guys that right now. But bottom line is we would much prefer option three. Number one, if we find our W-4s, 
we are subject to taxes. So all, the, all the people that we have talked to, accountants, CPA firms, we would be required at a minimum 15% tax on that, that money. Depending on what box the city checks on the W-2s, we could be liable to 45% on that, depending on what box, if you, if you check box number three, if you check box number four, number seven. I'm getting that look from some of you. All I can tell you is this is coming from CPAs that we have talked to. My, on this sheet, my oldest brother has been a CPA for a little over 40 years, and he has been my person that I've been leaning on. Um, we don't want to get paid. We've told you guys that since day one. We do not want to get paid individually. We want it to go into the department so we can continue doing what we have been doing for the last, we, Lamore Volunteer Fire Department has been in business since for 98 years. We want to keep doing what we're doing. Norm Garcia, I know some of you guys know Norm Garcia. He was the old fire chief. He, he got in in 1960. He said that's the way it had been, do, been doing even then. I have reached out to the, to the old city manager that works in Templeton area now. He said that when he first got in that they kind of looked at it. They had absolutely no problems with the way it was going. They never revisited it again. Um, basically, again, number three is the, is the one that we would prefer because there is no taxes involved. Whether it's good or bad, we have some people that are paying, and some of you have heard this, we have some people that are doing child support. If they get a check for, if they earn $5,000, that's an, a, it's a good number, they earn $5,000, then that $5,000, you know as well as we do, that it goes to the spouse. And he would still be responsible for paying taxes on it, and he would not get a dime of it. So I don't know what else I can say other than option three is the one we would prefer to go with. Any Thank other you. comments? I just want to let you guys know, I'm, I'm not an expert at this, but, you know, I have professional contacts that we've been leaning on in order to get this information. Uh, let's see here. We have been, um, you know, working with Bruce's brother, M. Green and Associates, um, out of um, Hanford and Visalia to get some of these accounting things cleared up. Um, Pacific Ag Insurance out of Hanford was the one responsible. They work with different nonprofits. They work with different cities. They were the one that gave us the heads up, do not sign the W-9s. Um, we've also been working with uh, Law Office of John Gordon. We've been working with Griswold, LaSalle, Cobb, Dowd, and Jen. We've been working with the RLS lawyers. Those are the lawyers who represent the California State Firefighters Association. So the information I'm giving you is just being brought to you from these experts. Okay, so I hope that brings you some comfort. This is not, this is not my opinion. You know, we have obtained our own legal opinions and we've gotten answers when it comes to that. Okay. Have you guys all had a chance to look at the options, Bruce? No. Just you? Uh, as far as when you're saying option three is the most yes. agreeable? From listening to it and yes. The, the other thing you need to know is if, if the individual gets paid, there's no legal reason they have to make a donation to the association. There's no, we can't force them. Mm -hmm. You know, one idea was, well, charge them a thousand dollar months in dues. Well, that's not quite legal. It's got to be a reasonable dues. Okay, so if the money goes to the individuals, we can't count on any of that coming back to the department to keep it going. So as Bruce says, you know, uh, from those options Nathan's describing, you know, we're definitely in favor of option three. Option three is going to be the closest to what we're doing right now. So as it, as it sits right now then, when people become a volunteer firefighter, they realize that they're not going to get paid, right? They, they agree to that? They're okay with that? Yes. It's never, has never been an issue with anybody. They understand. It is part of the, I don't want to say initiation, but it is part of when you become into it, you're, they're explained all of that. They know what, they know what they're in for. and everybody is there it might sound corny but we all care and we're doing it for the good of for the good of the city 
We don't expect pay for it, but what we have been getting, as just like Brom says, we've been using it anywhere and everywhere. Um, <coughs> the nonprofit, you know, we've talked about it. If we have to, if we have to step up and do a little more, if we have to have pancake breakfasts and that kind of stuff, we'll do it. It's not, it's not a big deal. Um, we've already talked about going out with a truck and taking our barbecue to different, different neighborhoods and say, come out and meet your friendly neighborhood fireman and hook the ladder truck up, spray some water, barbecue some hamburgers and hot dogs. And I mean, we've, we've already been doing that to an extent, mm -hmm. but uh, we'll, you know, we'll step up and, and there's just other things out there that we'd like to do. But it's like Brom says, if we are paid individually, there is a very good chance that that will not be donated back to the fire department and that is how we function. Or we'll get that one guy that one month, like man, I could really use this and then it's, you guys know as well as I do, it kind of snowballs. Once one person does it, everybody does it. So again, option three kind of takes that all out of everybody's hands. They don't even think twice about it. Um, in council and public, there are copies of the staff report that have all the written, all three options are written in the staff report, which are over here at the clerk's desk. I have a question on on a, if, if just a general Can, council. I I would recommend that we get all public comment before council. It brings back the council for I questions. I apologize. I just I, I mean unless it's a question of no. Based on I apologize. I was out of order. Sorry. Is there any other public comment? Tom Reed, 1060 Park Avenue, Lemoore. I would have a question for the fire department if you would prefer option number three or the uh, nonprofit. Number three is the nonprofit. That's a nonprofit. Okay. Okay. On, under that, I just I haven't heard it for sure, but I want to make sure they will be covered under the city insurance on that yep. option. That's, option yeah. three would include line item budget for all necessary fire services, and then then it would be a contract with the association for ancillary services, not fire service, ancillary services, the education, the fire, the barbecues, the things they're talking about. Um, and there would be no individual being paid and that was that is due to their nonprofit status, yes. Okay, thank you. And so that would be an arrangement that's similar to what we do with the Chamber of Commerce, is that correct? That's correct, Mayor. Okay. Yeah, I'm Kyle Reed uh, with more Fire. So I've been in this for 10 years now, volunteering. Uh, my dad's done it for 18 years. Uncle's done it for 20 years. My grandfather did it for 30 years. We do it because we want to volunteer. We don't want to make money. You know, we all come in here knowing that we're going to volunteer doing that. So we don't want to get paid. Right. Plain and simple. Uh, Brom Rosser again. I just want to make sure as I flip through my three pages here, um, just the last last key um, item I had, the document that I gave uh, Nathan, it was from the Institute for Local Governments. And on there they make a, a, just a small recommendation for councils of what they need, they need to do. And they say the least risky approach to have plenty of agencies govern, having the agencies governing body make such a decision so the requisite findings on behalf of the benefit to the agency and the community to serve can be made. So basically a council can put a policy or whatever you want to call it in place, recognizing what you're doing and why you're doing it, the Institute for Local Government says that's the least risky way of doing it. It's a contract. Council, the contract would do that. Contract would take care of that. Any other public comment? Okay. Speak now or forever hold your peace. All right. Come back to council. Uh, or, no. Here she comes. <laughs> so my first question is, who authorized to stop paying the fire department in the first place? And what was it, other than maybe a finance person who said, hey, we shouldn't do that? Or was it a legal matter where the, it had stopped? And my, my next question is, is it's, instead of calling it a contract, what happened to an MOU? Why is it not simple? A memorandum of understanding, why something like that couldn't have been developed to help not put the black eye on the city of Lemoore. 
the, a, some yeah, a contract and an MOU are both agreements. It doesn't matter whether you call it a contract or an MOU. They're both written agreements, which is the concept. <laughs> Typically, MOUs are done between employees, firefighters, or volunteers, and therefore they're not employees, which is why we refer to it as a contract. Okay. Is that it? All right. Back to us for discussion. So, Mike, your staff is recommending number one. Okay. What about the legalities of all three of them, city attorney? As far as how do we stand on it, on all three of them? Um, so typically I don't provide legal opinions from the dais and I can answer this in a more specific way if council directs me to do so. However, I do review staff reports and um, if I see something illegal, I would note it. Okay. I'd, I'd like to add that <clears throat> We've come a long way. We've done a lot of things, and we've come to, it sounds like an agreement that what the fire department was looking for a contract. I know that that's what Heather needs. I know that's what we need legally so we can get them paid. Um, they've, I'd say recently, got their nonprofit status back, so now it's time for us to make a decision. This covers a lot of things, and alternative number three, which I think is something we should highly consider and consider it tonight so we don't have to wait any longer to pay them but also it might take some time to get the contract written so I'm leaning towards agreeing with you guys let's let's get this thing done if you agree on option three I, I do as well yeah, that's it. I concur in, in council con a contract a written document would have to be negotiated and written and brought back to council at an open session meeting so that started. could be yeah, yeah. Let's get <clears throat> So what about the question of retroactive pay? They haven't been paid since November or December. Can this be made retroactive? So once a contract is approved by council that we can pay into the association, then we have the mechanism to pay them, and we can go back to the old methodology. No? <laughs> I want the, the idea of the back money owed can be negotiated in the contract, and we can take care of it in a number of ways including in the contract the resolution will need to be rescinded at the same time because your resolution requires you to pay five dollars to the individual what's as soon as you can we can do this well that would require the negotiations the agreement by all parties and it brought back to council the next regular meeting is you know in two weeks, two weeks. Uh, depending on the, the, the discussion and how long it can get written and reviewed and by um, the city and if they want legal review, which they're entitled to, um, you know, I'd say the next meeting may be probably more likely the meeting after. But that just depends on the discussions between the city and uh, the department. Could we um, have a special meeting if needed? For, say it's not ready by the next meeting, but soon thereafter, do we have to wait to the another couple weeks, or could we have a special meeting? Of course. Can we finalize a contract in a special meeting? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to think of. <laughs> there are certain things that have to be done at regular meetings. I would have to double check. I believe that you could potentially, um, but I would have to double check. I'd say the sooner the better. I concur. <clears throat> get it done. So before I say my opinion of what the options are, I think the first thing that should come out of my mouth is I'm sorry on behalf of the city. I'm sorry before anybody else said, you know, keeps going on. I don't want that swept under the rug. You asked for an apology, and I think you deserve one. I, it wasn't brought to my attention until what you guys you know, spoke to me. My biggest disappointment in all of this is not how long it's gone on. It's my constant requests to not say anything that would make council look bad. And that's ridiculous. We do look bad. <laughs> we haven't paid you guys in a long time, and it should have been a, made a greater priority. That being said, um, 
Nathan came up with a really unique option that was a compromise that you guys like, which is number three. And um, I'm really impressed that he was able to um, listen to both sides and, and bring that together. And I don't think that should be missed um, as well, because I think there's growing distrust going back and forth. I think this is a, more a failed leadership position, and that is solely on the helm of the mayor. It was not made a priority on behalf of the city. But that said, um, I'm with, the, with you guys with option number three. So. If I may, my eyes sometimes is, I'll be looking just to see where everything's going right now. Um, who made this request? Uh, not request, but number three, number two, and number one. Who put that together? Myself and Janelle have been working on it since last night and throughout okay. the day. Okay. Ironically, the the differences were I had my one and two matched her one and two. Okay. I was waiting for Brown was going to kind of give me what they wanted, and we were going to put that in as three. And before I got to Brown's, Janelle called, and we talked about this other way too. Good deal. And we're like, yeah, I think that's going to work. So we, we put that in. Good teamwork. Okay. I'd like to apologize also. It's taken so long. I'm, I'm all for getting it done as soon as we can. If it can happen by the next meeting, great. If not, I'm, we'll do our best, okay. I'm sure, I to I think try to get the negotiations over with as soon as possible between you guys and Nate. And I, I say get it moved forward. And, and yeah, it took too long. It's our fault, and I apologize uh, from my heart. So, any more comment? I'm just going to say I'm sorry too, as well. So, mm -hmm. God bless. Hopefully, we get done as soon as bet, as soon as possible. I apologize myself. I know that it's been a burden on you. It wasn't intentional in any way, shape, or form. I want to let you know that. Um, now, I'll leave it at that. Thank you. So we haven't even voted on which option yet, but so. Yeah, there's, there's no would, motion yet. Yeah, no. exactly. That's the, and we're still in discussion. So I would like to say thank you for all you guys do. As I said, I apologize to all you and your families for mm -hmm. the delay in doing this. We've been talking about this for a long time. Um, but I think, I think I mentioned it to you, Bruce, at one time that if anybody could get this done, thinking outside the box, it was this guy right here. And that's exactly what he's done, okay? He's our city manager. We entrust him to run this city, and that means the day-to-day -day, day operations, interacting with you guys, making these things kind of happen, these kinds of things happen. I'm one vote on this council. That's all I am. I go, I go where I'm supposed to go. If I have to give a speech, I go there. If I'm supposed to give a proclamation, that's what I do. I don't run this city, okay? Um, so I apologize to you for the delay, and I also thank you guys for working with this, because when this thing started several months ago, actually, even before that, you all know the history of this. This started two or three years ago. There was a lot of issues that had to be dealt with. And I appreciate you all being the way you are and understanding the new world that we live in. Okay, it's not 1916 anymore, unfortunately. I wish we could stay in like 1916. And uh, I think I've told some of you, um, growing up here in Lemoore, um, I used to wash the dishes for the fire department right up here in this old building a long time ago. And I saw a lot of things and it was fun. I liked it. <coughs> But let me tell you, I don't think some of the stuff they did then would be okay now, not with you guys or anybody. So that's, I guess that just goes to say that it's a, it's a new world, and that's why these things take time, okay? Maybe we could have done it a little bit faster. Um, I think well, as we go forward and negotiate and finalize this, we will work in good faith to pay you for whatever you guys have done between the last check you got and today. There's a mechanism that we can do that. Okay, and I know Nathan will work in good faith to do that. So you guys are not gonna be out one single dime for any of your time. Maybe it's a little delayed. Sometimes delayed gratification is, is difficult, but um, I think that's what we're gonna do today. So that's all I have to say.
Just one more thing. You were saying everything. Mayor, you did a great job. I, I like what you said until you said, I wish we can go back to 1916. I don't. I, I, <laughs> I, Neither I, do I. I just want to say that. That's all. <laughs> in the, in the uh, if I may, in the interim, is there, is there, in, I, I call because there's that interim period between, uh, you know, once we make a decision, you know, and, 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 and if, if, if number three is picked, per se, um, is there anything that you can see that you're going to fall short on? Is there anything that, I mean, because... We have pulled our, as they would say, we have pulled our spurs in. Mm-hmm. Like, well, not really what you're, I'm just asking you like right now, I mean, um, you know, if you have, because we're going to try to get this done ASAP, okay, that's the thing is, you know, you've got the nonprofit letter, we can move on, you know, we're going to move forward, but if there, is there anything that you can think of that, that you know, because I know your money's probably getting tight or whatever, is, is there anything that, that you can, I mean, that we can legally do? And you know, like Gatorade, anything of that nature. You know what I'm saying? For yeah, what I'm trying to say is, is when you're out there fighting that fire, and you need that, you need that, whatever you need out there that you pulled from that fund. I mean, is it being comp is it being taken care of right now, or is it? Are you going to be lacking when you're out there? I, and, and don't take me don't take me wrong. The money, what you're getting, and, and, and that pay that you get, or that monies that you get in your account, is extremely, extremely important. Don't don't take uh, you know that ain't what I'm getting at. What I'm saying is 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 in the interim, because there's you know, Do you need cash? the contract. If we go with number three, the contract's got to be written. It's got to be negotiated with whomever, you know, with the city and you guys, and and but it's that stopgap. It's, it's, it's that, or that small, not stop, but it's that small area there that, that needs to be, you know, maybe taken care of. If we know about it, we can maybe figure out a way to go with that. Sure. <clears throat> Quarter, do you have an answer or a response to that? Sure. And good evening, everybody. My name is Chad Billingsley. I'm the uh, president currently for the fire department. Mm -hmm. And um, it's going to be 95 degrees this week, and I think some water and great, uh, Gatorade would go a, a great way. Yes, sir. And, um, just wanted to say that I do appreciate the urgency, finally, of uh, you know everybody coming together and trying to get this thing done. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you Chad. Thank you for your service. We also can, as long as they follow the purchasing policy, they do have funds in their budget that they okay. can use to purchase these items. So, I, so they, and, and if if they if it goes over their budget amount currently, we can bring a budget amendment to you, and we can authorize it as an emergency purchase, right. and they can and then we can they can purchase right. it now and author and we'll get your authorization later. Right. The other thing that I do want to say is I can cut a manual check. So what I can do is I, it's called a manual check. If you guys, I'll have it cut and ready at the next session. And when you guys, if you guys approve the contract and everybody's agreeable, I can hand the check to them right now. So I won't, usually we have a waiting period between the time of when I get the invoices to when I get it, mm -hmm. when, when we cut the check. But I can, I can go up and manually cut a check for them. Cool. So. If you guys vote on this tonight, I will go see Heather but they have to put it on the They have to put it on the So, yeah. yeah. If we get... I can check and you can look at it, but until they approve the contract, I can't hand it to you. Okay, so we just need you to vote for... I'd, you could I make a motion then to approve option alternative number three, and, but to add that when we do pass this, that we have a check ready for them? A second. Okay, so we have a motion from Mr. Ch Chedister and a second for Mr. Neal. Mr. Chedister. Aye. Mr. Neal. Aye. Mr. Brown. Aye. Ms. Blair. Aye. And I vote aye as well. Okay. And so are, are you available Tuesday for a meeting to do the Monday for the contract, the 7th? The attorney's in town, so if we can work that out. And just let everybody know that I'm going to be out of town next week. San Diego, but if there is a decision and if there is, if a special meeting is called, you know, 
and uh, if I have to, I'll drive back. I'll do whatever I got to do to be here. So, thank you, Councilman Brown. All right, I guess that's it, guys. Thank you.